He has also been given the best food critic award from the Indian Culinary Foundation. Ms. Dalmia is an Indian celebrity chef and restauranter. She is the chief uh, chef and co-owner of the popular Italian restaurant Diva in Delhi. And she has hosted the TV cookery show Italian Khana for NDTV Good Times for three seasons. Ms. Neeta Kapoor is the founder and CEO of Siahi, India's leading literary consultancy. Her first book, The F Word, is a food book, a memoir, and a travel log. They'll uh, be in conversation with Moni Deepa Banerjee, who you have all seen on TV for NDTV. Uh, she's an aspiring reader and a bookworm, uh, and who says that once she retires, she'll take up reading full time. Uh, a huge round of applause for our panelists. She's joined in. Uh, you can see her on the screen. Hello. Yes. Hello. You can see her on the screen. Hello. Thank you. Well, <laughs> abandoned. Why didn't you come and sit in front? He's feeling abandoned. So. Oh, poor right. chap, poor, poor fellow. I know, what a life. But... <laughs> Kemon acho, Didi, balo. Kemon acho. Ami balo achi. Apni kemon acho. Ami ku balo achi. And <laughs> okay. let me start, actually. Do I? I don't need to introduce them. The young lady over there has already done it. Uh, first of all, thank you for taking time out this afternoon to come into the session of the Kolkata Lit Meet happening in the flesh after two years. Um, Mala, congratulations for, for getting it off the road, honestly. But okay, let's start with a little bit of formality, the introductions. And um, Ritu Di, um, have to tell you that you are certainly a phenomenal, phenomenal you know, personality in the culinary scene in the country. And I've heard that uh, Italians travel all the way to New Delhi to eat Italian food at her restaurant. Is that correct? How many? No, no, they do. Maybe from Gulam, them. not from Italy. Don't, listen, don't believe, don't believe Veer, okay? He just, I mean, don't listen to anything what he says. Right. Darling, yeah. nor do they travel to Delhi to eat Italian food. Correct. Exactly. Now they even get this Indian to go and cook Italian food for them in Italy. Now, what shall I say? Amazing. What Amazing. shall I say? I yeah. mean, what but, but, that but, day? But the point worth making is that when the Italian embassy in Delhi does formal dinner, say for the Italian president when he's visiting or prime minister, Correct. it's an Indian, it's Ritu they get to cater, not an Italian. Amazing. How many of you out there have been to Diva? The lights are so strong. I can see one, two, three, four, five, six. Not good enough. How many haven't oh, been? How many have haven't enough. been to Divas? Me, I haven't been. Shame on you guys. Shame complete, on you guys. Complete disgrace. Put it okay, on can we have a quick change? We cannot have her moderate this session. Okay? Uh, this is not cool. <laughs> Would you like to take over? <laughs> Honestly, I promise. I'm in Delhi in April. You must I... not pay any attention to Ritu. She may be the greatest woman chef in India, but she's not moderating this session. <laughs> yeah, okay. I am. I am. I, this... I'll shut up. I will shut up. But yeah. I'm there in Delhi in April and I promise I'll be there. And I really suggest that you all put it on your bucket Absolutely. list. Okay. Um, the lady here on my left wearing this amazing, amazing sari, Meeta Kapoor. Now, um, you know, I just want to ask her before this session ends, how on earth should, did she get that? book title past her editors and the censors, the F word for goodness sakes. And that was in 2010. Um, I just found that amazing. And I've just sort of gone through the book a bit and it was astonishing. But what is equally astonishing is what she does at Siahi. So any of you aspiring writers who want to pitch a book, write a book, get it published, and most importantly, get it sold, please knock at her door. I will be doing so soon. Thank you for being with us all the way from Thank you. Jaipur. Lovely to have you here. And Veer Sangve, I'm going to put on record. 
yeah something beyond the rude life and the rude foods that you talk about all the time love the stuff but i owe you i owe mr sangvi and i think i should put it on record over here you know back in the mid 80s when i was this nouveau young journalist i had just quit the telegraph and i was trying to look for freelance opportunities to write with no experience whatsoever and mr sangvi who was then yes i have to call you mr sangvi that's what yeah, i used to call you make me sound like your uncle or something <laughs> <laughs> So Veer then was kind enough to say, sure, write, write something for Sunday and why not? And I did. I'm not going to embarrass him or myself or you guys, you know, with the story about what I wrote. But thank you, Veer. Thank you, Moni. Yeah. You, as you subsequently proved to the whole world, you were an outstanding journalist. Thank you so much. The gain was ours. But believe me, that kept me going for a long time. Thank you thank, for thank joining you. us today. Now, uh, you know, we already know what we are talking about, or do we today? When um, Malubika called me up on the phone and told me that I'm supposed to discuss right recipes, I promise you she left me quite confused. You know, I'm a very kind of literal kind of person, and I was wondering what's she talking about? Am I going to talk about writing recipes, you know, W-R-I-T-E? I mean, did she really want my panelists to write? You tell us how to write recipes. Or was she expecting me to talk about right food, which I thought, you know, retro food, traditional food, that kind of stuff. Or did she want me to talk about the right food, you know, which is good food, food that tastes like food and is still healthy and keeps cholesterol at bay. And finally, of course, given the political climate, how can I forget? Did she want me to talk about the right food? Very <laughs> saffron and very, very vegetarian. <laughs> so Ritu, I'm going to start with you. You tell me, what did you think about when you heard about the right recipe? Well, definitely not saffron. I have to admit, even if I get a supari behind my back, I don't give a shit about that. Uh, but saying that I like to be a vegetarian, but I think in some ways, whether you talk about right food, for me, if you talk about the right food, R-I-T-E food, or whether you talk about W-R-I-T-E food, for me, they all go hand in hand, you know? Okay. So, and what really is right food, R-I-G-T food, uh, that satisfies you, that brings a smile to your face, uh, that gets you a shabashi from your uh, guests, that for me is the right food. So I leave it to you. You want to talk about right food, R-I-T-E food. Good Marwadi will tell you lots about the ritual food. You want to talk about the right food, R-I-G-H-T. Please speak to Meeta about it with my size. That's something I'm not capable of doing. I'm not capable of doing that. I'm sorry. I mean, anything which does not swim in butter, olive oil, ghee doesn't quite work for me. Okay. And if you want to talk about WRIT food, well, darling, I have long COVID now. I've forgotten how to write. So I have a feeling I'll be a silent spectator on this entire session. No, but you must remember right recipes. And that's exactly what we are supposed to talk about. Veer, what did you think when you heard right recipes? Uh, first of all, there's no such thing as right food or wrong food. There's good food and there's bad food. Absolutely. When, yeah. When it comes to recipes, I think recipes are important because every recipe that works has been created by somebody who experimented, who came up with it, maybe several generations ago, and then perfected the recipe. So I respect recipes. And there are many, many good recipe books at different levels. If you're cooking Italian food in India, for instance, the best recipe is Italian book is Italian Khana, which I regret to say is written by Ritu Dalmia, but is really an, oh out my God, poor is really an outstanding book. You can't <laughs> go wrong following those recipes. On the other hand, I'm always a little skeptical about people who insist on the sanctity of recipes. If you are a professional chef, 
And the difference between a home cook and a restaurant chef is that you can go home and cook one thing today and cook it differently tomorrow. A restaurant chef can't do that. Restaurants are not really about imagination. Once the menu has been done, there is no imagination required. The challenge is to make the same thing exactly the same way. Restaurants in their kitchens value consistency much more than they value imagination. So for those kind of in those kind of people, recipes are very important because the imagination goes in the creating of the recipe, not in the reproducing of it in the kitchen night after night. But otherwise, I mean, I'm not a kind of cook who follows recipes. I look at ingredients and I decide what to do with them. Usually I destroy them, but I still try and cook on inspiration. I'm surprised to hear that you actually... I'm a terrible cook. I think Ritu will tell you. Yeah, Ritu will tell you and Seema there as well. Please. Well, Seema does all the cooking at home. There yeah. you are. So you have to tell us about the other stuff. I, and I, that is something all of you do. And that is writing about food. W-R-I-T-I-N-G. Yeah. So I think writing about food would... So I'm going to just dispel with the R-I-T-E and the R-I-G-H-T because... Uh, there's nothing right or wrong. As, as we said correctly, it's either good or bad. There are no shades of gray in food, by the way. Um, as far as writing is concerned, yes, uh, like we were discussing backstage, uh, uh, my role as a literary agent is that I'm always looking for people who are writing about food. When I'm talking about writing, I'm talking about the, uh, the creative expression of the experiences behind discovering food or creating food, or just dealing with, you know, touching ingredients, the sensory experience of food, whatever region, wherever you are, what is lacking in our Indian writing is that we don't have as many food narratives. So that is one thing that when, when you talk about writing food, that's the first thing that come to, comes to my mind. My concern is that we are just losing out on so much from the length and breadth of our country. Um, that we need, we need more and more people telling their food stories, their, whether it's nostalgia, whether it's their traditions, even if they've learned, you know, the, the typical way of how we all learn in our grandmother's laps or mother's laps, those are very conventional stories, but they are also very rich stories. As far as recipes are concerned, uh, again, I will echo what we said. It's important because I also run a hotel. So it's important <coughs> for us to maintain that consistency that my particular gutwa gobi or my mangori ki sabzi has to taste the same uh, or even the proverbial jungle mass has to taste the same but uh, i'm back in my hotel kitchen every couple of months and with the season change throwing in what what the land is yielding us and recreating the menus and making sure that you know whatever is local whatever is seasonal is coming so the recipes change and you do reinvent yourself so that is where i would look at recipes from where i'm i'm a baker as well so and baking is a science so you need specific recipes baking for is that. not cooking it's chemistry yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is it is chemistry so yeah and even if you deal with the ingredients that you have in your fridge or in your pantry when you set out to bake you do need to measure and to the last correct possible point, decibel point, to really get the texture and the fluff or the moisture, whatever right, you know, whatever you're baking. So yeah, I guess you, you have to straddle all worlds to really reach a particular reality. I have two questions coming out of what all three of you have had to say, but let me take the easy one first. And that is, you know, after the pandemic, things have changed. Everybody has become a home chef. I mean, even I have tried my hand at it, and I'm sure there are plenty out there, plenty of people in the audience who have also, you know, done some great cooking at home during the lockdown months. How is this going to change our engagement with food? Ritu, by any chance, do you find any substance in some stories that people tell me that people are going to restaurants once, you know, a restaurant like yours, and then they'll eat the fine stuff, and then they'll pick up boxes of recipes, ingredients from wherever they can, and they are freely available, and try and recreate at home. So people are that engaged in food. Is that 
first of all, even happening, do you think? And is that a worry for your business? So uh, firstly, I think, um, I think the F word will be thing of the past. The new thing will be the C word or the P word. You know, it's very funny when pandemic happened, actually we all were lying, doing nothing. Kitchens were empty. People were twiddling their thumbs. And we started something called Diva Casa at that time, one of the first, which was do it yourself kit because every Instagram post was about home cook. Um, people were messaging me nonstop, asking me recipes because all they wanted to do was cook. I actually thought that trend will continue. But what is very surprising, and I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, that now suddenly people are back in restaurants with a vengeance. It's almost like they are making up for two years of being stuck at home, uh, being not being able to go out. So we are still selling our do-it-yourself kits. We are still um, doing a lot of that home cooking stuff. But restaurants are also back. So I'm not worried anymore. In fact, to be honest with you, I've worked more in last three months than I've done in last three years put together. So I think eating out will continue. I would have, if you had asked me this one year ago, I would have said absolutely not. Everyone will be cooking at home. I think the problem what's happened now is it's more of an age thing rather than anything else. If you ask me personally, I eat out very seldom now because it's now for a special occasion or it's for something nice or a celebration. Uh, I rather cook at home, I rather eat at home. But the young people, let's say between the age of 20, 35, it's like they have been, you know, they have escaped the prison. So they are eating out. So the whole client base also at all our restaurant has drastically shifted in age group in the last three or four months. So. Uh, I have this big smile on my face when I say it, that business is safe for the moment. Maybe the casa business will go down a bit, but I'd rather have the restaurants doing well. Revenge dining, that's what they're calling it. Absolutely. You know, everybody's going out to eat. Uh, but, you know, you say the younger people are going in to eat at your place. Everything is on Instagram. You know, somehow food has also become about the visual right pornography honey uh, my editor once told me that food books actually sell more than any other books any fine piece of literature she also told me that food shows have higher viewership than any porno channel so i don't know what to say about that <laughs> that's good to know would you agree with that yes, it's, is yes, it true it's definitely it's about food porn uh, it's about yeah, people are actually cooking just to put their visuals on Instagram and get as many likes or get as many followers and are becoming influencers just in the food space. So a whole new world has burgeoned. And there's a lot of storytelling, what I was talking about, uh, food traditions being kind of revived and written about. A lot of that writing is happening in short form on Instagram. I'm, I found Absolutely. a lot of interesting writers and I've reached out to them and we are actually getting books done. Yeah, so it is translating into something, but uh, yes, people are back with a bang in restaurants. True. Uh, even a person like me who likes to basically entertain at home because Jaipur has really not much to talk about as far as food is concerned because we don't have a diva there, unfortunately. Uh -huh. Any Rajasthani food is crap, so I mean, what can you say? What? No, you can't say that. I'm, not really. I'm a Rajasthani. I'm, Italian. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you I'm not Rajasthani, but you come, come, home. I, no, come no, no. home, I'll give you I think we'll just blame crazy. your ancestors, Ritu. No, 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 Mika, food. let's face a few reality. <laughs> After eating one plate of mangori and gatta and sangar, next day you need five antiacids, okay? I mean, yeah, Rajasthan yeah. never had any fresh vegetables. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, but that's, a, that's a fair criticism. Yeah. I don't think it's crap. I think it's very great cuisine. Mm. But I think because it's a desert cuisine, there is not a lot of fresh vegetables. That's right. right. And if you're a vegetarian, you end up eating lots of little balls of um, atta <laughs> right. made into various right. yeah. That and I can much, see. And how much lal mask can you eat? Please, please. No. I mean, well, honestly. Yeah. Well, no, first, Monday lal dishes. mask, Tuesday, safed mask, yeah. Wednesday, jungli mask. <laughs> Thursday, almost right in your back to that. Yeah. yeah, but that's when you eat at restaurants yeah, yeah, yeah. and hotels, yeah. not when you eat at home. Okay. <laughs> we are, you know, yeah. little yeah. culinary we, yes. war is kicking off. <laughs> yeah. And we don't need it with Ukraine yeah. and Russia going bang, bang, oh, yeah, bang. Yeah. Let's not fight yeah. about the food. But, Veer, I yeah. have to ask you, I mean, are 
you know, you're saying everything is Insta and you're getting Insta chefs to write yeah. a book for you. But people want to see things. Like somebody put it very well to me that earlier we would eat words, whatever you wrote, we just gobbled them up. But now people want to eat photos. In that circumstance, are food writers the new dinosaurs perhaps? Well, it keeps changing. Restaurants, for instance, instance, stopped using advertising in England and in America. They started using Instagram to promote themselves. If you did good food posts, what food that was very attractive or interesting, then people came to your restaurant. It was much more effective than taking an ad. I suppose that's true here. You take an ad in T2 or you do a very good Instagram post, you'll get more people from the Instagram post and it'll be free. The problem now is that Instagram, for instance, has changed its algorithm. So if you have photographs, which is what most food posts are, you come at the bottom. If you have video posts, because Instagram was competing with TikTok, they come at the top. And there's been a huge controversy in America and now in England about people complaining to Instagram and saying, you're putting restaurants out of business. Why can't our posts come on top? So I think therefore the social media changes will come and go. Food writing will stay. I absolutely mm. agree. Food really? writing will stay just like with the, this whole thing about ebooks and audio books and everything. But, you know, a physical book in your hand, it's not going anywhere. So writing will stay and, and food writing per se will stay and books will still get out. And when what we were saying about, you know, the algorithms changing, but the latest is like you have to have reels on if you really need to get yeah. noticed. Right. So that's what's ruling the game right now. And who knows, after two weeks, we'll have something else right. being thrown up at us and people will adapt. Yeah. And it'll, they'll still keep posting in whatever way social media wants you to post. Okay. Because if you're going to garner business, if that's how you get clients to your restaurant, so be it. You know, you've just got to move with the times and be pragmatic about the whole thing. But just keep writing, guys. Okay. <laughs> but uh, again, Ritu, I mean, don't you feel the risk of having... A cottage industry out of food blogging, people writing about food anywhere, Instagram, Twitter, God knows, Facebook, where else? You know, when that happens, Ritu, is, doesn't it get a bit risky that the writing may not be up to par? If it's not we writing on your restaurant, some blogger is, some social influencer, does that impact your business? So I'll get into a lot of trouble for saying it, but... Uh, then you I must mean, say it. Yeah, then I don't care. So, you know, I'll tell you what, uh, a good food writer, whether it was in times of Instagram or even before, there's always a good writer, an informed writer, blogger, whatever you may call it, and an uninformed one. I still remember in the first, when Diva opened in uh, 1999 or 2000, I can't even remember, there was a young journalist who came from a very important paper and she was going to review the restaurant and she asked me what were capers, okay? She had never seen them. She had never tasted them. And she asked me some silly questions. I was young. I was a snob. I was arrogant that time. So I got a little pissed off. I left the table and I got a terrible review. I got a shit, shit review uh, from someone who actually had no clue about Italian food. So this is, we are talking about 1999. Then we came to an era, I think mid 2015, 10, 15, when suddenly these food um, groups, you know, these major groups of food, so-called food enthusiasts started writing about restaurants or started writing about, um, you know, anything which was related to food. Again, you know, it was like they would come to the restaurant, say, OK, if you don't give us free champagne, we are going to put a bad review or a bad mark on your our food group. Now, of course, you have Instagram bloggers, etc. And some of them are amazing. Huh? Mind you, I have got in touch with some really cool young people uh, to do something different for my events and catering. But yes, at the same time, you also have this group of people who have no clue. And this great word that they love to use that I'm a foodie or an influencer or a food enthusiast, I think is the shittiest words and the most silly titles that I've come across. But this is something that will always stay. It's not going to change now because there's Instagram, because it has been always the case and across the world. So for us, I think you just have to swallow it. 
uh, keeps you on your toes. You take the good, you know, comments in your stride, take the criticism, which is valuable to you and rest, you just have to learn to ignore. I mean, gone are the days when I would lose my sleep over because some silly person said the pasta didn't have enough chilies in it. So those days are over. Veer, your thoughts? Yeah, no, I think I would broadly agree with Ritu, which means... Broadly? I would narrowly agree with Ritu, yes. which means we're all, we're both in trouble. But there have always been people who write about food because they can. And people who write about food because they know something about it. The people who write about food because they can, because the newspaper in question will allow them to write about it, have nearly always been ignorant. And there's always been a certain amount of ignorant writing about food, right from why just diva from the time you had met Saluna, there's been sort Absolutely. of- Absolutely, oh yeah. Kinds, yeah, there's been all kinds of crap written about food by people yeah. who really don't know any better. And I've talked to many people who write about food and what they don't know about food will shock you. So what Ritu is saying, I'm perfectly willing to believe. I think it's the same with influencers. There are good influencers who do understand food, but they are few and far between. The vast majority write about food because they can, because in Instagram, there's no filter, there's no edit. You can just write what you like. The difference, I think in both times, the reason these people have got away with it is because of the people who publish them. In the case of newspapers because of, and magazines, because of lazy editors who are content to publish any crap. And now, unfortunately, it's essentially a racket. I said this yesterday at the festival, so right again, the way it works is this. If you open a restaurant and you want some publicity, Usually a guy who opens a restaurant doesn't know anything about it. So he hires an agency, a PR agency, a social media agency. Most, I mean, I'm sure they're wonderful PR agencies, but the vast majority of the smaller PR and social media agencies are effectively scamsters. So what they will do is they will say to you, don't worry, host a dinner and we will invite top influencers. So about 30, 40 people who bought followers on Instagram will turn up and they will say, meet so-and-so anonymous. Doesn't look like much, but has 20,000 followers or so-and-so has 60,000 followers. Then you will be obliged to give free champagne, free alcohol to all of these people. After they've gone home, the agency will come to you again and say, we will talk to them, but of course there is a cost. So can we get six lakhs, seven lakhs, whatever, which they're allegedly passing on to influencers. Actually, most of it stays with the agency. These influencers mm -hmm. post because their followers are bogus. Nobody really cares. It makes no difference to the restaurant's business. If the restaurant is good, it survives anyway. If it's bad, regardless of influencer marketing, it closes down. But whether the restaurant closes down or it stays open, the agency makes money. That's how it works. Gosh, grim. I yeah, never no, imagined. It is, it is a reality. But the thing is, like what Ritu said and the catchphrase is that, that you have to be discerning yourself as to whom are you taking on board? Does, does, that, does, does that person really know food? the engagement, the informed uh, attitude, the research behind food. And if you pay attention to the writing, you can immediately see through the faff. And it's very, it's very easy for me. If I read the first and the last sentence and something in the middle, I know exactly, literally just in Hindi, we say, So it's about just weeding out, filtering out. And I'm using the word filter because it's used in so many other connotations now, but we filter people out. Yeah. When the kind of writing that comes to us, we know immediately as to, you know, have, have they done some research? Have they actually experienced the sensuosity, the romance of creating or tasting or just experiencing that cooking process, wow. you just need, you need to know instinctively otherwise, and also you need to read. And picking up on what we said, I think we lack food literature in our country uh -huh. Okay. in contemporary times. If I go into the archives, if I go into various museum libraries, I will find huge tomes, rich reservoirs of our food traditions being cataloged, being written about. I have seen those manuscripts myself uh, and those old recipes myself from various archives and various royal kitchens or otherwise, even family homes because when I was started researching on my third book, that's what I was doing. Uh, so it's not that, but then suddenly there is this slump 
and nobody's researching, nobody is writing in depth, and we have a lack of, like we probably need an army of weed kind of people. True. Uh, to write quality. To, to write quality, to dip into, dip their toes right into the depths of that huge well of knowledge that is there in our Indian cuisine or regional cuisine or what I'm talking only about India right now. But, and globally, if you look at the food narrative scene, my God, I am just spoiled for choice. I don't have time. But may I say I something? Yeah, yeah. Sure. May please. I add something? Sorry to be a devil's advocate, but isn't this the case in India because food writers or whatever get paid so badly? Or they don't get paid. That's the enough. that's the case for all writing in India per se, whether food or so, not. I mean, so also so the publishing said, industry really needs to get their act together. <laughs> <laughs> so eat, but not sure if you can. No, no I, think, I, I think the point Ritu's made is a valid one. I agree. I mean, she's absolutely right. All writers in India are badly paid. <clears throat> But when you hire, say, a political writer, even if you pay him or her badly, you hope that you will get some coverage that's political. When you get a food article or a hotel article, you don't care about the article. You just hope you'll get advertising. That's but, what makes it worse. You know, I have pages and pages of questions I could go on with, but I think we are running out of time. And I'd love to have some questions from out there. Is there a recipe you want them to share, Ritu included? Go ahead. There's a lady over here. You need a mic? Is there a mic? Why don't you just take this one? Oh, there you are, Puna. Okay, so I'm one of those influencers. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so I uh, write about food. And when I started a blog back in 2009 about food, I started because nobody else was writing anything. And I was like, there must be other people like me who have no clue what to do, who have no clue where to go. And they must need my help because I don't think anybody else doing it. So that's when I started, uh, especially because it was a call for distress. Um, we had just graduated from college and all my friends who were traveling outside of India or outside of Bengal rather missed home cooking and kept on asking me weird questions like, what cut of meat do I buy? And my favorite one, what temperature should I cook it in? Should I turn on the gas or not? This is my favorite question because once I wrote a recipe of chili chicken, this person followed the entire thing through and then calls me up and says, it's still raw. And I say, what? Why? I did not turn on the gas. I was like, okay. You did not write it. That's fine. So after that, every time I write a recipe, I still have this problem. I at least cook it 10 times with different adjustments made every single time. And I really wanted to actually hear about that today. Uh, one thing I keep on insisting on people adding is the location where you're cooking it from. That makes a huge difference in what you're cooking because the location makes the ingredients and the temperature. And I have always believed that those two are incredible factors that we nobody talks about. Okay. You don't talk about it because you don't know about it. But today, if you are buying a... Italian uh, uh, durum wheat pasta, and then you are trying to replace it with, let's say, a normal medewala pasta. The first difference is a difference between, let's say, a barilla and a lysia. And I think uh, that's something that everybody who has at least done some amount of uh, food writing right, would know. Right, right. One of the things that I have an issue with about food writing in India that we Sangvi really rightly pointed out was that we get paid so badly. Uh, I understood it when I started writing for different brands. I don't know anybody. I was like, oh God! Is there anybody? Who I'm so I'm much better well. off as an influencer. I get paid ten times. I was like, I am going to go back to my blogging and Instagram. This is not working. But who pays but, you? Uh, Does that pay? Brands pay me. That's the client I'm, pays you, no? So that's, that's so that's not journalism. It's advertising. So that's the thing. That's yeah. advertising. Yeah. So there's yeah. always been more money in advertising than in journalism. So nothing's changed. Mm -hmm. you, the moment you take money from the brand, you cease to be a journalist. You're an advertiser. One second. You're an advertising you agency. No? Any other yeah. questions? Sorry. I, Any I other will take questions, it please? Yeah. Okay, there's lots of people at the back. Thank you. Hi, you. good evening. Thank you for the precious time. Uh, I have two questions on my mind right now. So first of all, I was going through an interview of a chef, the executive chef of Novotel Mumbai. 
so he mentioned that he never follows any recipes or like he always gives his his, uh, his ideas also in the recipe so the taste can change and the texture can also change every time so do you agree with me on the fact it, it, no it, thank it, you it, for telling me i will never go to the novotel <laughs> and like uh, is there a means, next question or is there somebody else i have one more question okay quick so uh, uh, like you know that the person is paying you for having the food at your restaurant but you know that the person does not have any idea about that food and it's still criticizing or shouting at you so how do you react to that person no, i don't you want no, to take no, that no, no. have I you ever had because, anybody no i don't because never did paid uh funding and uh, never had that situation thank god for that so right. and also we don't have influencers nor do we call influencers or instagram and that's why my uh, following is so low we okay <laughs> it hasn't reached the 20 30 yet, so. i'm old fashioned i'm sorry i'm really old fashioned so but on the whole that's true no paying customers when they go to a good restaurant rarely complain because they're satisfied it's the freeloaders who complain because they try and make themselves seem awkward so the restaurant will suck up to them more gosh how dreadful is that question anyone yes i have go ahead uh, it's a kind of a layered uh, two part question okay. Okay. so when you're talking about writing about food uh the first thing that came to my mind were writers like laura escoval or uh, joan harris who so richly described their regional food in terms of a fictional background and that's so wholesome and that reminds me of my indian cuisine and secondly again because i what so much of netflix i think of nigella lawson and films like uh, no reservations 100 foot journey and all where you have this you know very very elaborate a rating system which is so authentic which can make or break somebody so uh, in india we don't have any kind of a rating system like that like the michelin star or you know these very highly rated critics uh, okay. who we will start that. soon okay yeah we we're starting one next yeah. we're starting one in the second half of the year so that will take care of that we are starting I'm something starting like that i'm starting one yeah. you are yeah. starting one yeah. uh, do you are aware of it? Is, i mean the chef oh. no So I know it because France will be giving a star rating, like yes, one star, two star, yes, and yeah, all that. Yes, it will. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Oh, that's 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 great. Hello. Any other questions, or yeah, I mean, or maybe we should be packing things. Just up? one question. One last question, sir. Last. A quick one, please. It's Thank a, you. Hello. It's yeah. It's fine. We can hear you. It's on. It's on. It's on. Okay, ma'am. Just uh, I want to make a statement, not a question, but. but So briefly this, i uh, think the guests for the next session are already I, I, here i beg about i beg just as we complete in 2 seconds uh, this pandemic uh, ended or it is a mid of the pandemic or a height of the pandemic we don't know we are in the mid of the pandemic the pandemic has produced husband cook <laughs> and it proved that men can also cook mr sangvi would support it <laughs> Men can also cook. I cannot cook, so I can't support. No, you support. You just can't cook, but so there are. So this is a new kind of recipes have come. So I call it Archimedes principle. Archimedes, Archimedes. derived in the bathtub, not to invent buoyancy, but to take a bath. <laughs> like us, uh, husband started cooking during the pandemic. Nothing to do. Are we are old enough? Uh, so now we started that. with seeing this your recipes and all these youtubes and this ladies cook kitchen that gentleman's kitchen who started cooking then after cooking we started cooking suppose hyderabadi biryani we landed up cooking something which never looks like hyderabadi biryani <laughs> so then we have to Fair rename it bukhara khichdi can perfect, i can perfect. i say something yes, about please. this please yes. because i think i think we really as a society need to transition from gender specific yes. stereotypical way of thinking Absolutely. that men and women are different in the kitchen we are not we are human beings so whether it's a man or a woman cooking it doesn't matter it's about your commitment your love for food and your desire to cook and to produce brilliant food whether it's me or my husband how does it matter we are living in a gender fluid world guys just move on from there please wonderful and that's a perfect exit point for all of us over here is my mic working by the way 
How many of you turned chef in the pandemic? Chef, cook, whatever, dal, chawal, you know, pasta, whatever. How many of you? Oh, that's very little. That's not too many. I, my restaurants will survive, I think. Sorry? It's a I think my restaurants will survive, I think. Yes. Yeah. I so agree with Ritu. We hoteliers, we welcome such people. <laughs> Please just come to us or to Ritu or whoever else is... You know. Any luck with a question, please? I think uh, I have one. I think we are out of questions. We do you have? Oh, Can we take are. one question? Oh Can my you? God! Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. All right. We have six minutes more. You know, I can't miss a deadline. I mean, sort of twenty-eight years I've been beating deadlines. So, any last question? Yes. Can I ask a question? Yes, go please? right ahead. Where Excuse are you, Monity Padi? The side. Okay. This side. Go ahead. Moni go right ahead. can you hear me? Yes, this side. Perfectly. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Go right okay. ahead. Yes. This question is for uh, Rituji. Well, I love cooking and I love Italian food, but half of the ingredients are not available in Kolkata. I know Italians are very particular about their cheese they eat, the texture of the pasta, the consistency of their sauces. But how do I recreate it, given the fact that hardly things are available? So please forgive me. I have actually used Gobindo Bhog for making a risotto. Absolutely. I couldn't find Arborio at that point in time. And I had watched Seema Ji's recipe on television. And I wanted to cook risotto that day. And I added lots and lots of butter. And I cooked Gobindo Bhog as a risotto. And it, it wasn't the best, of course, but I was happy. And I also didn't have white wine, but I still did what I had to do. So how do we go about, because we don't get these ingredients here. I don't get brie and uh, emmental and all these kind of cheeses. Probably they are not Italian cheeses, but I hardly get Parmesan here at times. What do we do, home cooks? Well, darling, you're not the only one who doesn't get Parmesan. Even we don't get Parmesan. There's a law now that uh, any cheese which has rennet is not allowed to be imported. Did someone talk about right cooking or something like that? Anyway, yes, so don't worry. Don't worry. You're not the only one. But to be honest with you, I really feel there's so many Italian recipes which can be done with such simple ingredients that you don't need these emantal breeze or whatever. Yes, for an herb, if you want to cook a risotto, Yes, you do need arborio because uh, Gobindo Bhog, although it's my favorite rice, it'll never have the starch that we need for risotto. But a simple pasta, simple eggplant parmigiana, a simple just a grilled fish or meat, actually you don't need so many fancy ingredients. And that's the beauty of Italian food that it can be done with such simple ingredients. Just to give you an example, one really favorite pasta that I discovered very recently in Sicily is called pasta con tenirumi. What is tenirumi? It is loki. And how do they cook it? With loki, tomato, and loki ke patte. I'll tell you, it's loki ka sabzi with pasta. And it was delicious. It was so delicious, I can't tell you. So you don't have to go for uh, recipes which have all these fancy ingredients. 80% of the recipes will be with just basic olive oil, tomato, basil, garlic, and you'll be sorted out. Wonderful. Can I just yes. An yes. answer that? Because yes. I've had exactly the same difficulties as you. And contrary to Ritu's cherry stuff, it does make a difference if you don't have the right rice. It does make a difference if the ingredients are not perfect. But what has come to my aid is the internet. You can get pretty much everything you need now on Amazon or on one of the internet sites. I buy all my Italian ingredients on the net. I get everything I got last two months ago. I got Aquarello rice, which is the Rolls Royce. Of Amazon, did you get or no? Yes, it's yes, you can get. Contrary to what you, can, contrary to what you say, it's not no, impossible. No, if you're getting Parmesan, I have to send some uh, food controllers over to you. You've just broken a major, major law. No, no, no. no. Yes, yes. There is yes, no yes. law against consuming Parmesan. <laughs> of course there is. There's a, there is. Against, there's a law against importing Parmesan. I'm not importing it. Ah, so, okay. <laughs> yeah. so just go on the net. When it comes to cheese, 
Parmesan is a problem, but there are people like Spotted Cow yeah. making perfectly Spotted. good camembert and brie in Bombay who will do it for you on the internet. So just the internet will open up a whole world of possibilities. Can I add to Thanks. this, uh, just to help you out with sourcing ingredients, even if you're sitting in a city like yours, uh, which is very surprising that you don't get the ingredients. Yeah. But there are apps now, and I'm not going to name those apps because otherwise people will say that I'm promoting whatever. I don't do that. But there are apps who you have to just get on and download those apps and go through their lists of ingredients and whatever they're selling. And they'll pick up stuff from you from anywhere in the country and courier it to you by the next flight. Oh, so, great. yes, that's happening. There are two or three such nationwide apps that are doing great work. And I'm managing to get my ingredients all the way to Jaipur because Jaipur also has some problems about sourcing ingredients. Calcutta has a lot more than even Jaipur for that matter. But see, there is hope. Can you guys hear me? Is this mic audible? Can yeah, you hear yeah, me? Yeah, you okay. Hear. So, uh, you know, this is the perfect line for us to end the session with. We started talking about right recipes and it looks like there is nothing called wrong recipes. You will get your ingredients. You can, you know, certainly, you know, innovate a bit with local stuff, but there is no wrong recipe. So go right ahead. And I think on that note, uh, an applause for all our panelists who just made this an amazing session. Thank you so much, uh, Ritu over there. Thank you. We'll see you in Delhi just, soon. Just can I yes. add one thing? Yes, Ritu, please. Ritu, since you've had such a bad experience with Rajasthani food, I'm going to invite you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's cooked in my house every day. That's my no, problem. Let me, let, me feed you, let me feed you what I cook. Done, 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 done. Which done. is without Fantastic. the greasiness and without the masalas and without the basin and without done. the dried berries. Done. I am going to done. extend that invitation. To I want myself. to give you the real yes. taste. <laughs> dispel and dispel your yes. hatred for. You see what is in your gharki murgi dal barabar. Have you heard that statement? So that's the. Yeah, case. but there's a lot more to Rajasthan yeah, than gattas sure. and chakki ki sabzi. Please, that's again a very stereotypical way of looking at okay. regional so cuisine. You so and I have to, to have a separate conversation on this. Yeah, yes, considering and, that uh, I wrote about Diva in my book when you just the first Diva had opened, and the oh. F word has yes, we have a few a couple of pages on just your restaurant, Wonderful. and I've also described the way yes. you were whipping yes. your chocolate yes. ganache. <laughs> There's a whole scene with you whipping your chocolate ganache with so much concentration. You should read those pages again. I Wonderful. would love to. I um, would love uh, to. Me too, along with uh, Ritu. Don't yeah, yeah. Without you, I'm not going. Absolutely. Thank no, you so all much. Of you. I love Rajasthani food. I can't but... make up my mind. Will you be my plus one or will Veer be my plus one? I will let you know, Meeta. Okay. I think the answer yes. is obvious. <laughs> Just make it plus, plus, and plus. And thank you for the amazing uh, work you are doing out at Diva. Thank you. Um, that thank was you. fantastic. And Veer, amazing. Rude life, rude food. The loveliest people. He's a rude man. Not far from it. <laughs> too big to differ. And thank you all very much. And I think thank we'd you. better clear bye out bye. for the next one. Bye. 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 Uh, the, the books of uh, all of our panelists is available outside. You can have them, uh, you can purchase them and have them signed. So if you want, you can purchase those books right outside. <laughs>